Good morning, y'all. Uh, my name is Samantha Mirabal with Melka's application team, and we're here starting out the, oops, I did not update the date on that, starting off the new year with um, our design shop talk. I left the year. Oh, well, probably everyone's doing that. Anyhow, um, what we're trying to do here is to see what questions you have and get them answered. So feel free to type in any comments. We're live on both Facebook and YouTube. So you can type them in on the comments on the live. Don't send them privately. I don't see those while we're live. Um, someone has to send them to me later. So type them in directly on the feed. If you see me looking off to the side, that's what I'm looking at. I got a secondary monitor here. Um, so I can kind of try to keep track of any questions. I'm at a new location, so hopefully this all works right. So go ahead and I'll jump into what questions I was sent in ahead of time. And as you have questions, type them in and we'll get them, we'll go through them. All right, so some of the feedback we had last year was, hey, we want to know what we're going to talk about ahead of time. So these are the questions I was sent in beforehand. So um, somebody wanted to know how to use the foam arrow. So we're going to go over that. Um, the, uh, there was a question about how to do cross-stitch design, so I'll give a quick little demo of that. How to make mock-ups. Uh, so basically, how do you show your customer what it's going to look like on a garment. Um, how to do patches. I even brought a whole bunch of little things to show you <laughs> um, for that. So I've got my little teaching aids here. Um, the design checker, we had a few questions about the design checker as well as how to stitch on the back of a hat. So those are what I was sent in ahead of time. You know, we might get more th topics covered as we go, but that's what we start with. Um, so this is one about the foam arrow. So, hey, how do you do it? I see we have standard shapes, but I really want to be able to create my own. How do we do it? Okay, so let's take a look at that. Um, that's for the, one of the other questions. Uh, all right. So foam arrow stitch. So let's look at first where you get to it. All right, so I've got Design Shop up here. And right here, you'll see we've got the Select Automatic Custom Shape Input Tool. So if you click on that, you'll this box down at the bottom appears, and there's different options. So the Foam Arrow is under Custom Designs, and then you have Marrow. So from here, you have some standard shapes that you can use. You just click them and drag them onto the screen. They're pretty, they're incredibly easy to use. Literally, left click, drag, Drop it on the screen. I can center it because it's a pet peeve of mine. There we go. So now I've got something already on the screen that I can play with. So I can add designs to it. I can do whatever I need to do. And it's already set up um, to sew. So that's cute if you want to use one of these. Now keep in mind you can modify these, right? So let's say um, you want to use this rectangle. All right. so. I've got my rectangle and now I want to modify it, right? So you can always select these and choose the wireframe, add points and drag them around, right? So if you hold the control key while dragging, it leaves it as a curve. So control on the keyboard, left click and drag will give you a nice little curve. All right, so you're gonna to have to do that for all the elements, but that's one thing you can start with and then modify. So that's one option you have. Now, what if you wanna create your own shapes altogether? All right, so let's say I've got this shield down here. Um, there's a bunch of ways we can do it, right? So I'm going to select this thing and I'm gonna do it the fast way first, right? So every, I like fast. So if I select the shape, I hold, I can hold my shift key, click on that, click on the walk, and that now gives me a bunch of walk stitches, all right? I don't need all these inner ones, so I'm just going to delete those, and I'm going to turn off the art so you can see. All that did was create a walking stitch. So from here, I can create my patch, right? I've got all the elements I need. I can copy and paste that, give it another color, and now I've got the shield shape twice. If I want to make that a marrow, again, I can copy and paste, give it another color, change up here where it says walk type normal. If I change that to decorative, so bead, that's cute, but that's not what I want. I want marrow. So I'm going to go change it to marrow. All right. So now I've got my marrow stitch, but look at this. This is odd, right? This isn't what I would want, right? 
And that's because it's coming to a sharp point. So what you're going to have to do for this is split the element up and just adjust your wireframe until it gets the look you want, right? So if I select that point right here, split element at selected point, I'm going to do that at all of these intersections. So I'm clicking on the wireframe, selecting the point, clicking on split element at selected point. All right. Now it's all split up into a bunch of different segments. All right, so now I can modify these so that I get coverage over that area, right? So I can move my wireframe, move that one up and maybe move this one over. So let me click on the other one. Where is it? There it is. So maybe I select on that one and move it over. Okay, so I've got one, oops, zoomed out too far. All right, so I've got one corner resolved, but what about these over here? Again, I would go select it. And, you know, I can add points, maybe move this around. Really, what does this boil down to? It's me playing with it, quite frankly. <laughs> All right, so I'm moving them around until I get, again, the coverage I want. Okay, once you get it looking decent, then you can go test sew it out, see if you need adjustments, things like that. Like up here, I would do it. I want to do it a little different. I probably would make this one come up a little more, that one up a little more. So there's more overlap between both of them. So it's really just play with the different areas and now you've created your own shape. So I did that using just the conversion. Now, if you don't have the convert, what do you do, right? Well, then you have to trace it. I mean, it's not hard, it's just, so I'm going to go over here. If, I'm cre if you don't have the option to do a ch um, change element from one type to another, I'm going to click on the walk. I'm going to change this to decorative, change this to faux marrow, and draw it. So I know I'm going to have to split these. So because of that, I'm just going to go ahead and... All right. So... Again, I don't like how I did that, but that's all right. You guys get the idea. So you're just going to go through and trace your shape, right? Okay, and then it's a matter of just modifying your wireframe, right? So selecting this one, moving it over a little. Let's move that down. I like that, that'll be all right. Okay, so you can draw your own shapes, be whatever you want it to be, and create these on the fly. It makes a really nice little patch for you. It kind of simulates what a marrow machine would do, so which it's a pretty look. All right, so any questions on your marrows? All right, I don't see any questions typed in yet. It's neither on Facebook nor YouTube. All right, so what else do we have? Um, okay, so hopefully that showed you how to use the standard ones, how to modify it, and then how to draw your own. Oh, one thing I did not show. Let me quick do that. So let's say if I draw this the opposite way, notice this. So I was going from left to right using foam arrow too. If I go the opposite way, notice that my chain stitch is on the wrong side. All right, that doesn't mean I have to redraw it. Okay, so... All I have to do is come over here and where's F? There it is. Instead of foam arrow two, change it to foam arrow one. Okay. So when you have that selected, now I can just move this. And all that did was switch it to the opposite side. So foam arrow one, foam arrow two. So if you guess wrong, um, Karen, you asked, will the lives be on YouTube at any time? Yeah, they're. We're live right now on both of them, Facebook and YouTube. So the videos stay up on YouTube as well as on Facebook. So um, it's live right now on YouTube. So it'll be there for viewing later as well. Okay. Yeah, on YouTube we have six people. On Facebook we have 30. Hi, all. All right. So what else do we have? Okay, so I showed you all those. So we had a question about um, how to do cross-stitching. So yes, the software can do cross-stitching. We, You can do it manually, or you can have it kind of auto-convert. So I'll show you um, 
the some of the fine lines like these black lines are things that you're going to digitize as walk stitches after the fact those don't auto anything so you have to do those but let me go grab so i did this beforehand all right so i just bought some art real quick so i'd have something to look at um so to when you, if you're going to go create your um cross stitch patterns you can and you want to auto generate it you don't want to draw it by hand then what you would want to do is you go over here select on the art go to right click go down to cross stitch okay so from there it'll bring up a little wizard you can change how thick you want the stitches how big you want the boxes to be they're in points um, so if you want them larger if you want to use a traditional cross or if you want to do stars or um, straight up and down you have those sorts of things so traditional is going to be you know it's thickness of two let's do three um, cross 2020 you have the option to do low medium or high filter so if you leave it on low for the moment show you what that does um, it's just how much does it simplify the design so how much of it is it going to grab and what you'll see is it processes it all and creates you a pattern okay um, low is going to give you the kind of blockiest look high is going to do the a minimal so here if I turn these off and just show you this one was processed as high so you can see it kind of left out a lot of detail so I'm gonna have to go back and add X's and you can of course do that come over here and draw in whatever you want so if I change this to the line tool and start drawing all right I'm just making a mess at the moment here you know it's gonna fill in the X's however I draw. So I can go through and individually draw what I want and it will create the X's for me. If I want another color, I can come up here and again, draw and it will put those on color three. Color four is green, so if I draw that, it'll again put all the different things in there. So I can go through and individually add parts or remove them you know you can use the little eraser button and erase things so it's pretty the, it's pretty straightforward to use some of the nuances of it um, it doesn't really move around the screen well so once it's placed you leave it there <laughs> um, you can add to it subtract it modify it but it's stuck on the screen where it is so yeah that's a cross stitch. So yes, you can absolutely create designs like you had that you showed here. Um, yeah, you can absolutely do that. One of the things I did not show, like if you want to go add black lines, well, that's going to be done after the fact, right? So you're going to have to select off of it, choose your traditional walk. And now I would go through and add wherever I want those black lines to go. I would be digitizing those by hand. Okay, so those sorts of details you do after the fact and just draw them in there. Okay, um, 3D sat satin stitches like Hatch. I don't run Hatch, so I don't know what that is, and I'll have to look that up for you. Um, it, are you talking about puff or just kind of raised? Raised, yeah, you can actually do, um, you can do raised satin stitches, so... It's just a matter of building up stuff underneath it. So uh, when I do that, all my when I make patches, I actually make the borders really tall. So they look 3D raised, however you want to think about that. And it's just a matter of building up the thread underneath it. So typically what I'll do um, is under my underlay, instead of using that, I'll do a zigzag underlay, make the density something smaller. And that puts uh, some stitches underneath so that when your satin stitch goes over top, it has something to rest on to make it look more raised. Now you can, of course, put puff under there and things like that. Um, I'll look into what that what Hatch's feature is. So I don't know the nomenclature. I don't use Hatch, but I'll, look, I'll research that and get back to you. Okay. All right. So. Okay, I know we can create uh, mock-ups, but I don't know how to save it off so it, the picture goes with it. So saving off the picture is different, right? So let me go first show, let's create one. 
All right, so I, I made this beforehand. So I downloaded this picture off of Alpha Broder. It was, you know, off one of their shirts. They have the high res imagery that you can download, right? So to create this, literally this is what I did. I opened my design. I said insert. And then I went to where I downloaded the file. I literally did this right before. <laughs> and then once it's there, you know, you just scale it to whatever size. I forget what number I used. So scale it to whatever size so that it looks scale appropriate. Okay, that's still not right, but you get the idea, right? So you can create this. Now, the problem is this is a JPEG stuffed in this file, right? So when you go to save as, file save as, and you try to save it as a um, JPEG, it's only going to save out this pic a picture of the embroidery and not the JPEG that's embedded in the file. So for the art to save out, it has to be a vector, all right? And this is not a vector, it's a JPEG, therefore it's not going to save out. So you would need vector art in there, or you just do a screenshot of it, right? So you can literally do a print screen and then go crop it and send, save that off. So that's really what your options are here. You either have vector art in here, or you do a screenshot of it. So just save a, off a screenshot of your computer. Um, on my other computer, I actually use a capture program that lets me draw boxes around things of what I want to capture. Okay. All right. So there's that one. Um, if you go into Design Checker, is there a way to highlight all the same things to fix it and do all the fixes at once? Um, not really. Well, kind of. I, all right, that's a kind of a loaded question, right? So if I go over to this, and all right, this file doesn't have a lot of issues, but what you'll see is right here is an element number, and that's over here. So let's say you had a whole bunch that were missing ties. You could come over here and expand all these and go, okay, it's element 26, uh, you know, 18, 26, 11, hold the control key down, select them, right click, go to properties, fix whatever the issue was, hit apply, and then all of those will go away at once. All right. Um, so it's really to fix multiple things at once, you select an item, hold control on your keyboard, select whatever it is you want, right click, properties. Now, if it's a certain type of element, let me show you how to use this. So let's say I go, I just, I'm gonna go open a random file. So see designs. Let's open up one day. My lovely birds here. <laughs> all right. So let's say we wanna fix all the fills, right? So this has several fill element types, but rather than holding control and selecting them one at a time, I don't want to do that. I want them to select all at once. I want to speed up my workflow, right? So I'm going to select one of them, right click, go to select, same type. Okay. So when you select same type, now all of the fills within this file are now selected. So now I can just right click, go to properties, make whatever changes. So if I want to change the density on all of those fills, now all of them are changed. Okay, and that works for walks, anything. So these walks, right click, operation, uh, select, select same type. Now all the walks in the file are selected. Okay, so we have a few questions on YouTube. Let's see what those are. Um, hi, is there a certain hoop I need so that I can embroider on sweatpants? I own an EMT 16X. Um, depends on where you want to put it, what you can fit in there. Um, I've done sweatpants with rounds. I've done them with, uh, no, you know, you can get mighty hoops. These are, probably wouldn't work on a sweatpants unless it's up higher. But I mean, it really, where do you want to put it? How big do you want the design? And then you just got to get a hoop in there. Um, I've seen clamps used. Uh, they make, there's these nice little rectangle sleeve. Um, I think they're usually referred to as uh, sleeve hoops. I know Durkee makes them, Allied might. I know Mighty Hoop does. 
Um, they're basically little rectangles. So you get those and you can jam them further down narrow areas. So those are some good hoops to use, but um, yeah, that's what you do there. Let's see, there's another question on YouTube. Is there a way to disable a color change rather than deleting it? Let's say if I wanna try out a design without sewing the background for testing the foreground. So, uh, yes and no, right? So there is, if to make it not sew, you need to delete the colors from the design itself. Now, with that said, I test stuff all the time without sewing whole designs, without messing with a file. When you go to load the machine, um, you send the design to the machine, then what you would do at that point is just skip to the color you want, right? So there you go tools, settings, move, and when that's from the OS, which I don't have on this computer. So it's tools, settings, and then click on the move tab. And down there you tell it what color you want to go to. So if you want to go to color 12, type in 12, click move, your machine will advance to that color and now it will sew that color. Okay, so that's typically what I do. I don't bother deleting stuff. I just move through design and tell it where I want to go and go test that part until I'm happy with it and then, you know, reset it all and go again. So that's what I would suggest for that. Um, yeah, just advance through it. You can do it from the keypad as well. I'll see if we can get you the link to the keypad controls, but it's on the keypad. Oh, I have a picture of the keypad. Let me get my picture. There it is. So if you hold the needles, Needles up and down will advance through colors, right? So if you hold needle up, that'll go to the next color. Needle up to the next color. So that will, rather than you going to tool settings move, you can advance back and forth by holding your needles. Um, the needle and the up or down key will take you to the next color or previous color. So you can just advance through until you get to the color you want then hit start. All right. Hopefully that helps. All right, so let's see what else do we have. We talked about the mock-ups. Um, we talked about the design checker. There was another question on the design checker. Um, it, I did not get it copied and pasted in here. I saw it right before the live. Um, but the question was, when we send off a design, got it back from the digitizer, I go to the design checker and it says I need tie-in and there are no tie-in and tie-outs. What do I do? Well, first off, remember, your design checker is only valid for um, for OFM files that are native to Design Shop for wireframe formats. So, like this thing here that I have, this is not wireframe, right? This is an expanded file. See all this where it says expanded? Yes, it's an OFM, but it's expanded, which means there's no wireframe information that. So when you go over here and click on the design checker, it's telling me, all right, no tie off stitches. Yeah, that might not be true because this isn't a wireframe, so it's not checking it right. All right, because it's looking at properties. So what you really would want to do is if you're not, sh you know, check with your digitizer. Most, you know, good digitizers are going to put your knots for you. They're going to put your tie ins and your tie outs. Um, if they don't, ask them to put them in because that's just, they should be there. I mean, embroidery falls apart without them, so they're necessary. Please use them. Anyway, um, but it needs to be wireframe. So if it's a wireframe and you have this, then you just select the element that's a problem. So let's go back to my one day. So this one has all kinds of things because this was manually digitized. So it's telling me I got no underlay. It's because all the underlay was done as a walk but there's no tie-in stitches here. All right, so what do I do? Right click, select the element, go to properties, turn all that on, and now element one problem is gone. So the question was selecting multiple things. Um, yes, from here I can hold my control key. So I'm holding my control key and selecting all those things that have no tie-off stitches. Now from here, I can right click properties and I can go fix that. And all those elements that I had selected will then be fixed. Okay. All right. So what other questions? How to make patches. Patches are fun. Um, okay. 
So digitizing patches, we've got lots of videos that we've made in the past. I'll quick show you and um, hopefully we'll get some links posted for you to just the basics of it. There is an FAQ out there that shows different techniques. What you'll find is there's a whole bunch of ways to make patches. What's the right way? You know, whatever you like, that's the right way. Um, what I like is maybe not what other people like, which is okay. We all are gonna do stuff a little bit different, so keep that in mind. Um, so fundamentally though, you're either gonna have pre-cut shapes or you're going to take random material and cut it you know in the hoop or something of that nature right so digitizing it pretty simple right I'm going to use a walk I'm gonna grab my circle tool just cuz I want to and I draw a circle all right so I have a circle drawn let's say I want it to be three inches I'm gonna do a three inch round patch I'm gonna center it because it's a good practice okay so now I've got a circle drawn cute so that would be my placement stitch right so that's where I'm going to hoop whatever material you want so this stuff is plastic it's literally six mil plastic from Home Depot <laughs> it works great so you're gonna hoop your material and you're gonna run that stitch what's that gonna do it's gonna draw a circle out for you all right once you got your circle drawn now you're going to grab your fabric. Now, what material do you use? Well, you can use a stabilizer and a um, your material. You can just use twill. You can use a reinforced twill like this, which is a crinoline or buckram bit laminated to it. Um, it's a personal preference. Do you want your patches super stiff? This one actually has a um, sticky back laminated to the back it makes it super secure so that when I go to put it on my hoop I can just stick it on right it, it, you know everyone wants patches a little different some like them really flexible other like them really stiff you know you're gonna want to do something right so if you're just using twill use maybe a tearaway um, or something underneath it just to give it a little more backing you can use a cutaway or like I said you can use like a crinoline or buckram Whatever it is, you're going to lay it down on your hoop, repeat the stitch. So when we're digitizing it, what do I do? I'm going to duplicate it, give it another color change. All right, so there's my placement. shows me where to put my fabric. I'm going to lay the fabric in the hoop, run the stitch again. So run color two. Now I've got a, a piece of fabric sewn to my hoop. That's cute. Well, i got to grab my scissors. And I don't have my fancy scissors. I know I showed them last my last live, but grab your scissors and cut it cut it out. All right. So we did have a question. My sticky back stuff. What was that? Um, it's a laminate that you can get from Twill USA, or is where I bought it from. You can buy it from a bunch of places, but it's literally a PSA adhesive that you heat press on, and it leaves this backing that then makes your patch sticky. It does gum up your needle a little bit, which can be obnoxious, but um, it doesn't bother me, so. All right, so I've got my placement, my tack down. I'm gonna copy and paste that, give it another color. And this time I need to change its type to be a zigzag. So I hold it down onto the hoop. So I'm gonna hold my control key, click on this, which is your single line center. Okay, and let's make that closer to 30 points. So I'm going to make this closer to 30 and we don't let's change it to tackle so it's a zigzag all right so I got my placement my tack down I cut it out now the zigzag holds it all down now I do my whatever design you want on it so if you're putting text you're putting whatever logos you do that now at that point I'm going to copy and paste change this back to a satin stitch and make it wider all right, and give it another color. So now I have a patch file. All right, so then it's just a matter of sewing it. So like I said, I tend to use this plastic stuff. Hoop it, lay my fabric down, sew it down, grab my scissors, cut it out. After that, when it's all said and done, I don't have a patch here in it, but you can see what I've been doing. I poke them out when they're done. I just 
knock them out of the hoop and you have finished patches. Um, does e-stitch do the same for a hold down? Yeah, you can use an e-stitch for a hold down. Um, I prefer the zigzag personally. It's a personal preference. So yes, you can use your e-stitch. I tend to always use either as the tackle or if you, so tackle is a level dependent feature. So if you don't have that, what do you do? Well, you can make it satin stitch and change the density to 17. So turn off auto density and make the 17 to 20. And it's not a true zigzag, but it's close enough. It does the same effect. Okay. All right. So there, I tend to do all, so there is a FAQ that I think they might have linked already. They did, yeah. That shows you one way. It's got a PDF of how, um, with a bunch of pictures of how using um, a vinyl instead of the plastic. And then it shows sewing out the design, cutting it out, and then rehooping to do the actual outline. That works beautifully. Um, it's the same thing as if I did pre-cut patches. Like I said, I tend to do these on my laser because I can exactly cut them out. And then I use the sticky back because when you have pre-cut stuff, um, when it goes to sew the zigzag, you don't want your fingers under the machine. So sticky back becomes important when it's cut to sh exact size beforehand because sewing your finger, not a good idea. Don't do it. If you're going to put your fingers under a machine, use a chopstick. Don't put your fingers. Use chopsticks. If your machine sews through a chopstick, you break a needle. So, so through your finger, bad things happen. <laughs> I speak from experience. Don't do it. All right. Um, design checker. We talked about patches. Hopefully that helps on with patches. Oops, where am I? Okay. How to stitch on the back. Um, I think I covered this maybe early December. Um, I did talk to the guys about getting the actual file uploaded as an FAQ. So they were going to see about doing that so we can get you a link for future. So um, there are templates of arcs, right? So that you can, we're, like I said, we're going to get those uploaded to the FAQ. They're not there right now. I was looking for it beforehand um, and couldn't find it. So if whoever's supporting me today knows where it is, that'd be great. If not... <laughs> I did talk to one of the guys earlier and we're going to try to get that uploaded as its own little FAQ for you. But basically how I've always done hats the, around the curve, because they're all different, I tend to just hoop it in a round circle, just take a picture of it literally with my phone straight on, and then I bring the art into Design Shop and digitize around that. So then. I can then have that design done, and now I just do use alignment, get it lined up, and sew it. Um, it's there. The picture is not the most efficient way to do it. Uh, I'll be honest. Um, I just do it because it's easy for me. Uh, but the templates that we have um, that we're going to try to get you a link to, uh, those are much easier. You just open them up. They're already drawn out for you, and then you just make things flow around the curves. Okay. Uh, what can we do to make the EMT16X trim better? Um, there's a bunch of stuff. The best advice I can give you is give the tech support guys a call. They're really good at working through that with you. You know, they can check the mapping and, um, you know, check settings for you to make sure it's nothing like that. I know I don't see issues with trim personally, but I mean, it really is, you know, your mapping might be off. So get them to look at that. Oh, no. The school's calling. That's not good. All right. Let's see. What else do we have? Last question I had ahead of time was, how do you zoom in and out after you start a fill in the middle of making an object? So let's look at that. Okay. So let's say I'm drawing a fill. Oh, they did get you the radius chart. I just didn't couldn't find it ahead of time. So the link is there for you. All right. So if I'm drawing this, you can see it's panning around. That's annoying, right? So if I hold my shift key and then on my mouse, the little roller, okay, so I'm holding the shift key down and using my roller, it zooms in and out for me. See that shift and roll, or I can hold alternate and roll. 
Okay, shift and roll zooms based on wherever my mouse is. Um, so let me cancel that, put it back. Alt and zoom does it from the center of the screen. All right, so shift and zoom, alt and zoom. Or control and zoom is pan. And zoom, when I say zoom, that's the roller on. Now another, I use Illustrator and whatnot, and I've gotten Mighty attached to control and holding the control key on the keyboard and then the minus or the plus for zooming in and out. Um, I set those up as accelerators. So just because it's automatic for me. So to do, if you want to do something like that, you can go to Tools, Accelerator, Editor, go down to Zoom, Zoom, and then assign a key. So Control Plus, and then hit Assign. That's what I did. Yeah, I, already, I know it's already used. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to have to answer the phone because the school keeps calling. Okay, I apologize. I'm going to have to cut this short. I've got a, my children, are, somebody at the school is freaking out. So I'm going to have to cut, cut this short to go deal with um, family emergency. But I think that was all the questions I had ahead of time. So if there's any other questions, feel free to type them in and we will get those answered as soon as able. All right. You guys have a fantastic um, weekend and I will talk to you guys next time. Thanks.